What is the essence? Let's go there slowly. What is the essence of who you of who you are? What is the essence of the life that you are? I'm not saying that you should not try to improve the conditions of your life, but more importantly is to realize that you do not have a life. Because that's, people say, my life. Now, if you look at the structure of that sentence, my life, there's a duality there. Because if you say my life, that implies that you have it. It's mine. So it implies two, duality. If you say my life, there's you and the life that you have. <laughs> it belongs to me, it's mine. <laughs> so the, this thought, this language creates a duality in your mind. You call it my life. Yeah, that's interesting, so there's me and I have a life, and then the fear comes in, if I have a life, I might lose it. <laughs> and of course, then you visit the cemetery, and you say, yes, they, they all once had their life, and they lost it. <laughs> they lost their life. And that's going to happen to me too. Not realizing you are trapped in certain mental formations that create an illusory identity and actually create delusion. You don't have a life because there is not a duality. Without life, there's no you. So you can't have it. You are one with life. There isn't you and life. You are life. You can't, you don't have it. Now, if you are it, you can't lose it because you, can, because you are it. But of course, we'll have to see more deeply what we mean when I say you are life. But let's for a moment stay with that. You are, you are life, you don't have a life. You are, I, so you can say it for yourself in your mind, I don't, I don't have a life, I am life. This is the end of duality. Do you realize there's, there's a oneness of you and life? And when I say life, we can use another word. The essence of being alive. What is the essence? Let's go there slowly. What is the essence of who you, of who you are? What is the essence of the life that you are. Okay, now normal humans, which means unawakened humans, say, well, the essence of my life is my, whatever they identify with in their, it's my possessions, my, what I have, what I know, what I, my body, all those things that I, I identify with, that's the, the essence of who I am, is whatever I derive my identity from. It could be the physical body, but, or it could be my car, or my house, or my work, my function in society, or it could be uh, friends that I have, things that I have attained, it could also be, these things are all in the mind also. Because when you ident, let's say you are, your, your sense of identity, which is, comp you compare yourself to others all the time, this is you do when you're in your mind, you compare yourself to others. Let's say your body <clears throat> looks better than other people's body for a while this too will pass. <laughs> but for a while, you can get in there and then you become, this is my body, that also is a, 
mental formation. So it's not so much you identify with the body, you identify the thought of my body. That's what you identify. You don't identify with your Ferrari, if you have one. It's the thought of my car, which is, makes you superior to others who only have a little car. Or your body makes you superior to others who have a puny and weak body. So you can display for a few years, you display your body on the beach <laughs> and feel good about yourself. And after a while, a day comes when you look in the mirror and say, what happened? There's something wrong with the mirror. They, in the past, the, the, the mirrors that people made were so much better than the mirrors now. So for a while you, you identify with this or that, that is quite normal. And so when you ask who, who, what is the essence of who you are, most people would tell you, well, I am, this is who I am, this is what my identity is derived from this, 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 and this, and this bundle of things is who I am. It's not always positive, because I was just talking about having a body that looks better than other people's body. You could have a body that looks worse than other people's body. And so that serves too. You could either, either you look for something else that gives you an identity, like actually you're more intelligent than all these stupid beach bums. <laughs> So you can say, oh, look at these people, so, but you have so much more knowledge and intelligence uh, and you can look down on them. Or you can, or you can be more spiritual. So if, if you, I can't afford a Ferrari, I'm on my bicycle, and you say, look at this materialistic person in the Ferrari. <laughs> so you can still, or if that doesn't work, you can see how, how unfairly treated by life you have been and how much more, more so much more miserable you are than most most people <laughs> and you've really been a victim of of circumstances you've been a victim of your birth and of your your parents that did a dreadful job with you <laughs> maybe if their parents had been more conscious things could have worked out <laughs> but they weren't so but that, that also gives you a strong conceptual identity. So if you can't have a positive one, the negative ones can be just as strong, if not stronger. You can have a huge victim identity. It's a favorite thing. Sometimes in the collective, certain egoic things become fashionable for a while. Nowadays, is the um, victim identity for certain groups of people are very fashionable, so people can feel, oh, yes, we are all being victimized by those people, and of course, there's some truth in it, in some cases. But that doesn't, but to derive an identity is a delusion. To, 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 to derive a sense of identity from that is a huge delusion. That is not who you are. That's all my life, that's all. So if you are not all those things, so when I ask, who are you? If I ask that question, don't go, let's do this for a moment, don't go into the past. Can you, can you feel or sense who you are without reference to the past in you? You don't even need to remember your name right now. What for? You don't really remember your email address or your phone number or what happened to you 10 years ago. Don't need to remember that. Can you still get a sense without reference to your personal history, can you get a sense of beingness or presence? Oh, there's no past in that at all. But what is that? You can't really describe it. All you know is that you are. I am. You can sense the underlying beingness or presence of you 
And, but to really sense it, what needs to happen is that for a moment, the stream of thinking needs to subside. And it may be happening for many who at this very moment, the stream of thinking that is normal for most people that never stops except when they fall asleep, the stream of thinking for a moment subsides. And when I asked you whether you can be sense yourself without reference to the, your personal history, what I was really talking about, what I was really asking was, can you get a sense of your presence without thought? Ah, and there's enormous revelation here. This question, who am I, does not have a real truthful answer on a conceptual level. It's not in thoughts or words. The true answer to who am I has no thought in it. It is a sense of presence or beingness. And it, you can only sense that if, for, if, if, if it's only a moment. So the stream of thinking subsides and what happens is you are completely present without your mind saying anything. You, you can perceive everything, you can still, you can see, you can hear, you're fully there, and your mind is still. Still does not mean that you've gone to sleep. It's the opposite, you're actually more alert in that stillness than you would be if you were identified with this continuous stream of thinking. That's the st stillness, the inherent Stillness, that actually every human has that. You don't need to work hard to attain stillness or think that if I follow the right course of action, it might take me 10 years and then I'll be able to have a still mind. Uh, no, it's already there. And if you're not totally miserable and unhappy every moment of your life, that means without perhaps you knowing it, anybody who is not extremely miserable all the time has a little bit of access without even knowing it to that stillness within. They don't know it. All they know is from time to time they feel a little bit good. They feel they don't know, for three seconds, they stopped thinking. Ah, they might have some other explanation of why in that moment they felt good. Ah, maybe they were looking at a dog. And in that moment, because the dog wasn't thinking anything about them, because the dog d doesn't think, the dog is conscious but not conceptual thinking, the dog does not have an opinion about you. <laughs> and so when you were petting the dog, for perhaps you suddenly felt good about petting the dog. Why? Because for a moment the dog freed you of the judgmental conceptual mind that otherwise would be very active if you were petting a human. It would say something. <laughs> of course, you can't do that because people would think you're insane. <clears throat> you can't go up to a human, may I pet you? <laughs> that would be nice if they did that to each other, but. <laughs> but the humans have judgments about you, so whenever you go to a human, you know that he was, has certain thoughts about you, so the other human cannot free you from your thoughts. But the dog or the cat can, for a short moment, free you from your thoughts. And in that moment, it feels good. That's why people love their pets so deeply. There's a, there's a reason, a deeper reason why they love, because the pet frees them a little bit from their minds. And there are moments when you interact with, the, with your animal that there are, you can experience brief moments of thoughtless awareness. Two seconds, three seconds, but it's enough to keep you going. 
It's enough to, so that your life doesn't become totally miserable. And then you might have other moments. You might have moments when you engage in some physical activity. You swim or you climb a mountain, and then there are moments that your total presence is required by the activity so that there's not enough left for thinking. And again, you feel intensely alive. Oh, that was so good. Why was it so good? Well, it just, I love it. It's just so good. I don't know why it's good. Well, it's good because it freed you for a moment from the incessant stream of thinking and there was some degree of awareness or presence arising, but you didn't even know that. 